Hello, my name is Rob, and today I will be talking about how wetlands reduce flooding. I will look at some articles, uh, reports, and other information on how wetlands reduce flooding and talk about some of the uh, policies. So I will go to talk about uh, runoff coefficient uh, first. So you get a general idea of land use um, and flooding. So the a coefficient uh, is a dimensionless um, coefficient a measurement that relates to runoff and precipitation. It helps uh, predict uh, a flood hazard and Businesses uh, with a lot of impermeable areas, so like pavement, they have a coefficient closer to one. Whereas lawns have a coefficient closer to uh, zero. And the coefficient uh, goes from zero to one. With uh, a coefficient closer to zero, the there was more runoff and ground water uh, can be uh, flow into the ground and slow down. So that that's the the general idea of the runoff uh, coefficient. Um, another way that wetlands help uh, re reduce um, flooding besides uh, land use is uh, they store water and they reduce uh, velocity as well. And I will go to a different or different of a, a report. So I will get that ready. So I want to look at the report back to basics. There's some information about uh, wetlands in here, namely that we're losing a lot of our wetlands. This is a report from the previous Environmental Auditor General, no, Environmental Commissioner, sorry. Uh, Dan Sachs. And um, it says that wetlands and woodlands are critically important for southern Ontario as habitat as they are buffers against pollution and flooding, but they continue to be lost. At this point, I should say what wetlands all. Uh, they'll uh, areas seasonally or permanently uh, covered in shallow water. 
oval water table is close to the surface um, that favors the growth of plants that are like water. Uh, and this is in the in this report, those other uh, definitions of wetlands, um, they can get those technical and more simple definitions. But um, yeah, there, there are basically areas that um, are flooded. Um, and plants can grow on them. Um, yeah, currently the government, and this report was talking about the previous uh, government, um, <coughs> but it's, it's happening under the conservatives as well in, in Ontario. So the government is letting wetlands be destroyed. Uh, they help reduce floods. And then those recommendations to protect wetlands are until they're uh, proven to be provincially significant. Currently, um, uh, unevaluated wetlands, people can develop on them. Um, and provincially significant wetlands, there are some protections, but those protections have been weakened um, by the current provincial government, even more so than this report. Um, oh, I wanted to go to the um, an article just finding the Yeah, so now I'm talking about a uh, an opinion article I found in the Norwal newspaper. Will a one billion flooding bill finally make the GTA take stormwater seriously? So I wanted to look at that article. There was a recent uh, storm which happened in Toronto. A couple of days ago, uh, close to the 20th anniversary of the uh, Peterborough floods in 2004. Um, so those back a little bit of background in the article. Okay. Um, so it's talking about. So the f first quote that I wanted to highlight is to describe the scenes of the flood. Uh, so those photos in the sort of as cinematic as false because they reflect a recurring and terrifying reality for the people impacted. And acknowledging the lessons of our reality is the only way we'll ever learn from them. Oh, I should say who made this article. It's by uh, Fatima Seed on July 19th, 2024. Um, and then one of the lessons is don't build on floodplains. Um, 
there was an article um, uh, where the mayor of Windsor was interviewed. So I'll try that. Yeah, mayor of Windsor. And Um, in this article, the mail said that housing crisis demands developing um, floodplains. And it's by the same author. Um, the article is called Winter Mail says Ontario housing crisis demands developing on floodplains and farmlands. Despite evidence that People can die as a result of flooding caused by paving over wetlands. All the um, prop those significant property damage. Uh, was there any quotes there? Okay. Yeah, Windsor is already one of the most flood prone cities in Ontario. And then there's a quote, how can you ensure conservation authorities can study and model that if they are, that if they are losing their powers? Um, and that is um, studying uh, to see if an area is uh, prone to uh, flooding, and, and this is a uh, an interview. Um, <clears throat> um, and then the quote: "The reality is, I don't think anyone wants to buy a house if it's on a floodplain, and it's not treated po properly. Notwithstanding some of the things you just said about." conservation authorities and some of the changes in power. I still think there's a common sense element, uh, but um, the normal journalist uh, said, but you're still building on floodplains because, to use your words, there's nowhere else to go, right? And then the mail says, correct. Wouldn't common sense say maybe to avoid that? And the mail says, how? And then um, one of the questions asked was, there's no way to intensify development anywhere in the city to meet population demands. And then um, there was some gaslighting in this response about how it's uh, unaffordable in Toronto. Um, and talking about a house. And then talking about, there's a question, how, how do you mock at a house that's built on a floodplain? So, uh, if, and then the response is, if the conservation authority tells us we need to build the elevation, that's what the developer is going to have to do. But the same um, conservation authorities that recently uh, lost their powers uh, last year. I think that's all of the article or that I highlighted. But it shows that there, there's, even though those it doesn't make sense to <coughs> build on wetlands, mm -hmm. um, Politicians are going to make excuses. And this is a person on a housing advisory committee. Um, oh, I will transition. So I'm back to where I was in this article. 
Uh, people should, government should create more green spaces to help soak up water. So that's one of the things that wetlands do. Uh, and yeah, and then this point, the article is pointing out that southern Ontario is dominated by hard surfaces, which are impermeable surfaces, impermeable water doesn't go into the ground, and the water has nowhere to go. It speeds up, velocity increases. Um, so um, politicians have refused uh, stormwater charges that could have supported flood, flood prevention and encouraged more uh, wetlands, potentially, or uh, natural spaces. Um, yeah, and uh, the provincial government is pushing to develop natural spaces, the green belt. Um, there's been cases uh, in uh, Pickering, uh, comes to mind in, in particular where they wanted to build weight on top of a wetland. Um, and then there was a mention of the city of Peterborough. Uh, they have um, put money into um, flood reduction programs. Um, And there is definitely more to be done in the city of uh, Peterborough as, as well. Um, and we know that those increasing uh, climate change, storms related to climate change. Um, oh, where was I? Now I will go to, I think this is a, another article that I looked at. Yes, I wanted to look at um, an additional article. So this is uh, in the normal uh, as well. Paving wetlands for housing ignores Ontario's history of floods by Emin Mac. Emma McIntosh. Um, so the, the article talks about um, Doug Ford taking, um, um, gutting uh, legislation around protecting wetlands. Um, it talks about how wetlands act as a sponge. I should also t mention that there's different types of wetlands. Uh, there's a swamp, bog, fen, and um, swamp, bog, fen, and marsh are the main types in southern Ontario. Um, I I can go over like the, the specific types in a different video. Um, but. Uh, for the most part, I, I'm not talking about uh, bugs um, um, because the water is uh, contained in the in that wetland. But I, I am talking about like the swamps, the marshes, the um, and the fens. Um, yeah, so it acts like a sponge during heavy rain, according from this article. Um, and then uh, it mentions that the protection from back, back then wasn't perfect. And, um, but they have uh, 
halted some development um, or required companies to change plans. Uh, so those um, are major changes to wetlands. Uh, they eliminated avenues which by which wetlands can qualify for protection. Force being evaluators can no longer consider how species at risk use habitats. So there's going to be less wetlands. And then second, they require swamps, bogs, and marshes to be considered in isolation and not part of wetland comp complexes, which are interconnected um, in the same area. So, that, so for this video, that's uh, an, uh, an area that will impact uh, flooding uh, a lot. Um, because wetlands are not isolated. Um, Andrea Cockwood, a professor of biological sciences at University uh, Tech, Ontario Tech University in Oshawa, in this article said many wetlands have status as part of a complex when it qualify on their own. So even though wetlands reduce flooding, they, they, there's going to be less wetlands as a result of the changes. Um, and then another quote is, my interpretation from this is provincially significant wetlands to be re-evaluated under the, this criteria. It's very likely that they would have their provincially significant status removed. And the Ford government has already abandoned a strategy aimed at conserving wetlands and plans to further disempower the conservation authorities, which they have, uh, that in some cases are tasked with protecting them. So now it's the municipalities <coughs> that don't necessarily have the expertise to um, protect wetlands. And then um, replacement wetlands cannot fully replace ecological functions of natural ones. Um, and then those uh, heading building housing on Ontario wetlands would be rushing ahead in an unsustainable direction. Um, an example of uh, flood flooding. Um, and then there's a, a good quote, another thing, Ontario's own history teaches us that houses vulnerable to floods are unreliable as homes. Uh, and then there's an example, Raymore Drive, a floodplain where over 30 were killed by the rising waters of the Humble River when Hawking Hazel struck in 1954. The storm left thousands of people without home homes. So that's an area where uh, flooding caused people to die. Um, so I will go to a next article. And I'm just seeing if I highlighted anything in this article. Oh, uh, it doesn't look like I highlighted anything. So I might go to a... Um, I'll go to a report instead. And then there was a report uh, called Wetlands Mitigate Flooding. 
and, and it's in Ontario Natural. Um, there was a report by the Auto Journal in 2022, Ontario's Auto Journal, that said um, floods and related damages on the rise across Ontario, especially in urban areas. Uh, and the primary causes of increased flooding are conservation of green space to impervious surfaces. So I, I've mentioned that uh, from the articles and from the talking about the coefficient, runoff coefficient. Um, and then there's climate change as well and um, infrastructural. Uh, there's a quote, uh, what water naturally collects in these low-lying areas of the landscape, wetlands, where they then that where it is slowly released, soaked into soil to recharge groundwater systems absorbed by wetland plants. And then Southern Ontario's wetlands are estimated to reduce flood-related damages by 38% in urban areas and 29% in rural areas. And then there's a quote, a wetland as small as two hectares can retain water runoff from an area 70 times its size, significantly reducing flood damage. And that's from the Auto General in 2022. Uh, there's a case in New Brunswick that's referenced. Um, and they're talking about a one in five year old flood. And the wetlands saved uh, $2.4 million. And was there anything else? That I... Okay, so that's all that I highlighted. Then I'm going to see the if this is a report. Okay, yeah, so this is a report. Uh, so, I'll try and this one. so I think this is a report that they were talking about. Uh, value for money audit, climate change adaptation, reducing urban flood risk. And it does mention... What, I, what I've highlighted in a different report, Natural Resources Ministry has made little progress evaluating and protecting wetlands, which can provide important, important flood reduction functions. I'm just seeing if I highlighted anything else in this report. It's on the Auditor General's website if you wanted to read it. Uh, more in depth. Um, I, I don't really talk about it here. Um, okay, and then I will go to um, transition. I think there was a, an article that I talked about. So there was a study in the Impact Center of, on Climate Adaptation called When the Big Storm Hits, the War of Wetlands to Limit Urban and Rural Flood Damage. So I will look at this. So I made some highlights. Um, so it says well the, the they studied the economic impact of flooding. Uh, they looked at uh, 
some plots. Uh, a rural plot was located near the city of Mississauga, and the urban plot was located within the city of Waterloo in Ontario. And they looked at a 1 in 500 year flood. At the rural plot site, if wetlands, this is a quote, uh, were maintained, the natural state flood damages would have been 8.9 million. This was 3.5 million or 29% lower than the 12.4 million cost that would have been realized if wetlands have been replaced with agricultural development. For the urban plot site, if wetlands were maintained in the natural state, the cost of flood damage would have been 84.5 million, which was 51.1 million or 38% lower than 135.6 million costs that would have occurred if wetlands have been replaced with agricultural development. Um, and then uh, there was modeling that um, assumed that wetlands were replaced by urban, largely impervious services uh, rather than the agricultural development. The value of flood damage avoided would have exceeded 29 to 38 percent. According Accordingly, the additive value of wetlands to reduce flood damage, as profiled in this report, is consultative. And I don't know if I highlighted anything else in this report. Okay, so that's that page. I'll go to the next one. I think I talked about, okay, I talked about that. And oh, uh, yeah, this is a similar one. So I'll go to this one. Um, so there's an independent review of the 2019 flood events in Ontario. Um, and this is a special advisor into, on flooding. Um, I made this report. And I did highlight some of this. Um, I highlighted recommendation 17 that the province support municipalities and conservation authorities to ensure the conservation, restoration, and creation of natural green infrastructure, i.e. wetlands, forest cover, and previous surfaces during the land use planning to reduce runoff and mitigate the impacts of flooding. So I will go. Um, let's see. So yeah, um, yeah, currently the government is reducing the, um, um, protections that wetlands have and flooding is reduced by the existence of wetlands. Um, it reduces velocity, um, it, it soaks up s soaks up and stores a lot of the water, and if you build on top of it, wetlands will be worse. Um, so, um, that is, that is how uh, the, um, the basics of how wetlands reduce flooding. Um, and I hope that you have a enjoy the rest of your, 
um, your day, and I will see you in the next video.